Welcome to the Swimming From Home talk show. I'm here with Coach Eddie Kim. Uh, so Eddie, just, yeah, to start off, let, give me your swimming background, how you got into the sport, where it took you, and what you're doing now. So um, I started swimming because uh, I was born and raised in L.A. You know, there's nothing but beaches, pools, water parks. And um, I, my parents told me ever since I was a kid, I loved being in the water. Um, I enjoyed it. And I would do some risky things as a uh, never learn. I never did learn to swim up, up until four years old. So like at three years old, I would just try to jump in the pool without my parents you know, under my parents' supervision, trying to sneak in. And they were like, hey, uh, my parents decided like, hey, we got to teach him water safety. Um, so I was going to a private Christian school at the time. Uh, my mom was an after school teacher there. Uh, she was a Korean school teacher for the private Christian school. And um, our founder of the school, his bottom two sons were uh, swim instructors. So you know, summer job during college, they would teach swimming. So I was, I think, I believe, I think they had like eight or nine brothers and uh, they were all teachers at the school. So I had one of the brothers as a teacher and they're like, hey, if you want to learn how to swim, my youngest brother's coming, you should learn how to swim. So that's how I started doing learn to swim in the summer, uh, four, five, six. I'm getting older, but you know, summer swim, you know, you forget everything during the school year, right? <laughs> I come back, I'm still drowning, half drowning in there. And uh, I think my mom's coworker was like, hey, if you're interested, we have a club, small club swim team uh, coached by a 1980 Hungarian Olympian breaststroker at Cal State Northridge. Um, and we had a lot of like mutual friends that were on that team. It was a small, very small team, local team. I was like, shoot, you know, my parents were like, hey, he loves it so much. Let's might as well do it. Um, started out super slow. I was slow for a very long time because uh, I always felt like I didn't have the talent, but I always loved being in the water and I was willing to work hard. You know, I was a true student of the game on in that department. Um, I was a one trick pony. I only knew how to do breaststroke uh, in a four by 50 free relay at Junior Olympics. I'm the weak link, you know what I mean? Like coaches figuring out where to put me in to, uh, you know, support our, support our sprinters. We only had four 10 and under kids. I was the only nine year old. So, um, but yeah, uh, my swim career changed drastically when I met coach Kang. Um, he was the 1984, 1988 South Korean Olympic coach. Our local team was kind of falling apart. Um, our coach was our coach was going through personal problems and such, so everyone decided decided to like depart. Uh, some kids went to Rose Bowl Aquatics, some went to Canyons Canyons, you know, big teams that you would know from Southern California. Um, I was kind of like up in the air, and my mom, who was kind of fading away from making my swim decisions, it became like. I call my dad LeVar Ball on steroids. Like he was a South Korean presence bodyguard during 79 to 81, became a foreign exchange student here at UC Riverside. And then, you know, became, you know, lived out here and created his family here. But yeah, I had that kind of a uh, father figure and my mom was fading away from that responsibility, but she made that decision. She, she was like, I know husband, you're going to sacrifice to, drive through LA traffic during rush hour from the Valley to LA, which is only like 20 miles. But you know, on a Wednesday afternoon at four o'clock, that could be easily one hour, two hours. You know, I, some days I could easily swim like maybe half an hour of practice of a two hour practice because of the traffic. But, um, I, I thank my parents for ultimately making that sacrifice. Cause once I met him, I started getting on the national reportable uh, rankings, you know, um, I started winning junior Olympic gold medals. And I, I eventually with coach Kang, I made a Southern California record in the four I am uh, 400 meter. I am uh, that was number two at the national rankings that year for 11 and 12 boys in 2000. Um, and then I ended up uh, branching off a little bit, uh, got to, uh, 
had to, I would say I had the privilege to learn, to learn and be a part of a lot of big club swim teams here in Southern California. And then I ended up signing my uh, division one scholarship to us military academy at West Point um, as a distance swimmer. Um, and then uh, once I, it was a rough time. I'm going to be real with you. I hope kids were watching this. I, I was seven, I was 17. I just turned 17 when I signed my scholarship or I signed my letter of intent, basically. Um, I look back on it now. I was not ready to go out to a military academy on my own with no family and whatnot. Um, uh, but I learned a lot about myself that year. Uh, but I ended up leaving. Uh, things didn't work out. Um, and I came and decided to transfer to USC. Uh, no longer an athlete. You know, uh, all ex-athletes would know. A lot of coaches would understand three months within the three months after I stopped swimming, swimming full time, I added like 40 pounds, like pop, like boom, it just came out of nowhere. Um, I knew I was in trouble and I was eating still like an athlete, but I'm not, I'm not doing distance workouts. Uh, I remember I was putting on my uniform at the academy and one of the buttons were like a little tight. I was like, oh my gosh, man. Like, this is no go. Um, but I did eventually get back into things and I transferred to USC. No swimming, so I had to pay for school somehow. And I did ROTC for the Army ROTC program at USC. Fight on, baby. Uh, I did a side job and I started. Coaching first started became, uh, becoming like a side job then turned into this thing where I had this passion for it. Like I realized like, even if I was doing ROTC, I was like, I don't want to go active duty. Like what I got going on as a coach is do right now, but you know, uh, and I decided to coach, uh, now I've been coaching for now 14 years, uh, high school head coach at Long Beach Poly for eight years, uh, started my own club swim team. Uh, it's basically like a restart of my own club swim team with Coach Kang I had, uh, the Korean Olympic coach. Just basically a restart. Because um, I'll never forget, uh, this was a funny moment. Um, after our 2000 summer championship season, my dad, we had issues with finding good pools, you know, practice to practice in. So we decided to basically combine with a team called Downey Dolphins here. Uh, 20 minutes off of uh, downtown LA and I'll never forget we had like a little dinner like this morning star swim club dinner before we all basically went out to Downey and I'll, I'll never forget what coach King told me he's like hey kind of wish somebody would keep this name going and this is in near 2000 I, I promised myself by the time I'm 30 I'm gonna do that <laughs> and uh our club team has been going on um, and I coach now, you know, at first when I started coaching, it was, I wanted to be one of the greatest. I wanted to be a division one head coach, whatever I couldn't do as an athlete, I wanted to do as a coach. Kind of like that Phil Jackson, like I might have not have made it, made it like a star, star player, but I'm going to be a star, star coach. You know, I'm going to give back. Um, but and that's why I went to go get my graduate degree was to, you know, enhance my application if I was to apply for a division one job. Um, life changes, you know, like it, man, I'm telling you this Coleman right now, but for 10 years, I've been saying that that was going to be my goal. My parents, anyone who would hear me, I would say, dude, at the end of the day, I'm going to jump from high school head coach to division one. I'm going to watch me do it. That's what I kept saying. I'm going to do it like a, untraditional route i'm not going to be a division one assistant turn to a head i'm gonna go jump from high school to college you know um but life changes uh i don't know uh i'm a god-fearing man and i felt like there was destiny and plans made made that i might have never seen and that led to a lot of different things like 
getting into the entertainment business, uh, doing concerts, doing uh, managing recording artists, uh, doing media and photography. And uh, lastly, I got into sports, managing sports players turned into now being a sports agent. So, um, so, so you are a sports agent now. What, what sports are you managing currently? Uh, so currently I'm a certified WNBA basketball agent. Mm -hmm. Um, right now I'm in the middle of the process of a FIBA international basketball agent and as a major league soccer intermediary. Um, people always ask me like inner, my inner circle would ask me like, why WNBA first? You know what I mean? You, you had football players last year and I say, Kobe has five daughters. That's my hero. I need to meet him. I want to do business with him. His acumen and what he's become as a man, as an individual is different. Like I, I, I know I, I, I got to, um, unfortunately rest in heaven, him and eight other souls. But that was one of my motivations. And um, another thing is, I used to say WNBA, I mean, women's basketball, women's soccer in the Olympic global standard, World Cup, World Championships, they're always bringing home the gold. There's never a doubt that they wouldn't bring home the gold. And I always thought that they're underpaid right now, but eventually women empowerment and equal pay will happen. And I wanted to be able to help nurture and promote that. Um, and then go slowly into uh, these other leagues. Um, and I'm also just finished my application to the Canadian Football League. Mm -hmm. um, my plan with this whole sports agency thing is uh, I'm still going to coach. That's the thing. Everyone thinks like I'm not going to coach. I'm still going to coach because this – I want to give back to the community. Like, I don't want to be a division one coach. I preach loyalty to my children and I have kids that's been with me since they were in fifth grade, fourth grade, and now they're in high school. I'm going to see this thing through, you know, and I want to help be able to still help and coach them in the summertime when they're college athletes, hopefully, you know, that's my dream. Like my dream, I told them, I don't care if you make it to the trials, make our club swim team, uh, the USA swimming, like that bronze club ranking. Nah. My goal for them truly is I just want them to further their education and use swimming as a tool. Whatever mm -hmm. dream school you want, let's get ready for their times. You know, that's it. That's that's my goal. Like, whatever dream school it is, whether it's D1, D2, D3, NAIA, doesn't matter. I just want them to uh, further their education through swimming. Because yeah, that's what my goal was too, at the end of the day. Um, as a student athlete, uh, and that's, I want to be known for that, to help nurture kids, give back to the community, give back to kids, and some of the lessons I wish I, uh, I learned, I, I did an input as a student athlete or as a swimmer, I want to be able to make sure those mistakes aren't made with my own athletes or other kids, um, and, uh, I, I, I loved how you guys at Swim Swim highlighted that uh, young lady that got signed on to Cal Berkeley that went from 29 to 23 in like two years in the 53. I'm a, I was a mentorship program coach for USA Swimming in 2017. And I've been a, a member, I've been a volunteer for the LSE level and at the central, at the zone level for diversity and inclusion for USA Swimming. So I'm, I'm a very heavy component of that. Uh, I'm very uh, advocate of that, I would say, um, regarding diversity and inclusion in swimming because I think, I think USA Swimming's done a great job of doing that, um, having these camps. I wish, I tell, when I used to coach these uh, zone diversity camps, I used to tell the kids like, man, I wish we had those when I was growing up. <laughs> Because it's such a great experience. You know, you're getting to meet Colin Jones. You know, um, you're meeting Maritza Correa. Um, you're meeting all these Olympians, you know. And, you know, it's, it's really cool. Uh, I got to 
to USA Swimming regarding that. And I hope uh, they continue and improve and level up in that regard too. Sure. So, so as a, as a sports agent, I, naturally my first question is, do you plan at some point on representing swimmers? Oh, yeah. yes, yes. I actually do have one right now. He's actually a Ukrainian um, national team swimmer. Um, okay. He's a D2 All-American uh, at Wayne, Wayne State, Dima Drobnich. Uh Shout out to my boy Dima <laughs> out there. Um, and I would love, I would love to. Uh, one of my, I would, I would consider him as a close friend of mine. Uh, we were actually teammates, club teammates is uh, Milora Kavic. Okay. To me, he's Mike Kavic, but yeah. not everyone else in the Olympic world is Milorad, who uh, lost to Phelps by 0.01. But, uh, um, yeah, just I met him at the U.S. Open Championships this past uh, year in Atlanta in December. Uh, mm -hmm. Just reconnecting with him. We, we Instagram friends, but, you know, just reconnecting with him is always cool. You know what I mean? He gives me that perspective of uh, international swimmer at that level. You go, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and uh, I would love to represent uh, swimmers because I think Phelps has done an amazing job. I, he's always been my hero. Uh, he changed the game, you know, as you know, like, come on, we had an Xbox swimming game. That, that's, you gotta admit, that's pretty cool. You know, it was hard to do. It was hard to do. I'm gonna admit that was really hard to do, but Michael Phelps was able to elevate swimming into that type of market, um, type of, visibility um mm. and that's where the big name big name sponsorships come bmw i actually drive one so i actually give a <laughs> shout out um uh, you know we got big companies coming into usa swimming you got kobe bryant coming to the golden golden goggles you know you got you got big name people coming in and uh i think this younger generation come on now let's talk about kayla Jessel being on espn a couple of years. You know, I remember growing up, uh, uh, he used to do the tape. It would be on ESPN2 at like 3.30 in the morning for Pacific time if you wanted to watch the Division One championships. That's mm -hmm. in like the late 90s. My dad yeah. used to wake me up before morning practice to watch that. <laughs> so I could get amped up before morning practice. But it was so cool. But I'm like, I used to, I remember I used to say to my dad, I'm like, man, why can't they have this during like normal times? You know, like... Why does it have to be at 2.30 after all the ESPN highlights from the East Coast to the West Coast talking about the same game over and then this? This is Division One Championships. This is the fastest swimming of the entire planet. Why is this televised at 3.30 in the morning in L.A.? Like, is, um, I felt like we were always under wraps. Um, but Phelps definitely elevated that, and Dressel was on prime time, baby. <laughs> so... Um, Yes, I think swimming swimmers have a great market marketability. They're most, as you know, most student athletes coming out of D one, uh, D two, D three, or anyone. Most college swim teams have the highest GPA on campus as a sports team. That's I would say ninety nine percent. I used to coach college, so um, at the division two level, my kids were woo three eight three sevens all all over the board. Um, so you got that. You're not dealing with, um, you're dealing with an educated person, you know. Come on, swimmers' bodies. Come on, even, even magazines like uh, adult publications like Playboy talk about how the sexiest athlete is a swimmer, water polo player. You get what I'm saying? Like things of that nature, you know. We are marketable, you know. I think, I think we're underrepresented. I think we're a hidden talent as a professional um, so so as a sports agent uh you know what do you think swimming could do to to grow their marketability or grow their their face in the market i say follow the money uh i want to say i like the business model that ufc did i'm not a major fan of mixed martial arts uh kind of a fan but i'm not like really into it uh but if you look at how they operated, UFC and mixed martial arts, it took a long time for the U.S. to get into. So they went outside of the U.S. to get that market, to get that global sponsorship, money, investments, et cetera. 
and as you saw, they landed in China and they became a billion dollar company. Um, I love how what the ISL is doing. Um, but I think swimming, just like soccer, other people would say football, uh, it's a global sport. This is anyone. Anyone could break a world record, whether you're from Hungary or you're from Canada, you're from South America, wherever. And I think if we prof professionalizing sport, it has to be in a global status, not in a, in a country by country status. It, it's not, the, it, we can't operate like the NFL. We have to operate like a global entity, in my opinion. And I think ISL is doing a great job of that. Um, I used to always say, uh, especially when I was younger, like 10 years ago, I was like, man, if, if like an Australian type of coach or a team could offer me like, you know, big time money, I would jump over there, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Cause I've never been to Australia to swim or anything like that, but someone from LA, someone from California who's, who knows swimmers who swim at the national level on that national team level, I would hear like, yo, Australian dudes, man, they get banked, you know, they get paid, you know, their federation, they pay you, you know, they, you want stamps, you know, you on their magazines, you on their, you on their uh, big time publication, you know, you're on their mainstream publications. And I was just like, man, what? U.S. brings all these gold medals, you know, you got Michael Phelps, you, we got to have more than this. You know, I always felt like we deserved it. Uh, but, um, but just from a global standpoint, uh, Swimming has to operate as a professional league, as a global entity, nothing else. It can't be by country by country or Europe only or Asia only and North America, South America only. It has to be all together. And I think that's the only way we could generate the revenue, generate the investments, make the connections, make the network. This is, and it becomes a global network. You know, technology changes global, globalization. You got what I'm saying? Like, I'm here from Long Beach. You know, this is California here, and, you know, we're able to talk. Like, this wouldn't have happened 10 years ago even, like in 2009, 2010. You know, it would be – it wouldn't be the same. You know, Skype was still in the infancy age, you know. You still have to dial up with them too, you know, use a phone number and stuff. So it's definitely – I think it's – it's that's the way to go. And you never know – you never know a billion dollar investment could come from outside, like a, a, dip, a, a country you would have never known. Like when I heard the ISL startup, I was like, what? It's coming from Eastern Europe? What? Money's coming from there? It's because you never know. You know what I mean? Um, I think technology helps out with that a lot. You're able to connect with a lot more people, you know, business wise. And, you know, you're able to do things of this nature, Zoom, Skype, FaceTime, you know, IG Live, et cetera. So um, I think that's one of the big goals that we should do is make it a global entity and follow the money. You know, globally, there might be a lot of rich people who are ex-swimmers. Um, I want to bring up that example. Uh, I'm an Adidas swim. Uh, my swim teams are represented by Adidas. Uh, we've been with them for five years now. Uh, so I've been through Jason Lee's are coming in and coming out. I know you guys highlighted that on your articles on Swim Swim. I Shout outs to you guys. You guys, you guys are good, man. You guys are like, <laughs> yeah, you guys are like the best, like uh, the swim publication. I, I, I was telling my parents, I was like, man, this is a global swim publication. This is not just the U.S. thing. Like they, they cover everything. Our Japanese water polo Olympian is out. They'll let you know right away. <laughs> um, and uh, so that being said, uh, yeah, I think um, ISL is doing a great job. I think it gives that postgraduate professionals all over the world give that opportunity, you know, and I love the fact that doing the cut, like if you don't perform at a swim, you get cut out of the point system. And it's great. I, I think elevating that to another level, salary cap, trades, waivers, cut, you know, how other professional sports league do it would be a great thing. You can't pay Caleb Dressel the same way as, um, you know, as an Olympic finalist. You get what I'm saying? It's because it's two different standards still. Yeah, that swimmer is an eighth place, seventh place swimmer in the Olympics, but 
He's not Caleb Dressel, though. And the pay, there has to be a pay difference. You know what I mean? And uh, I think marketing your star players and then also marketing the, the talents. That's, that's the one thing I love about enjoying reading about Swim Swim is I love how you guys do. It's like reading ESPN for swimming. Hey, you guys put the, um, the what if questions out there. You know, you talk about everything out there. So publications like you guys help professionalize swimming. You know, you guys are helping reach out to others, you know, and um, you guys do a great job of bringing the current and the past together. So well. I have to admit that, like that, I, I love that. I love that. So, um, so yeah. Uh, and, um, well, I appreciate it, Eddie. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I think I've got time for one more question. Um, mm -hmm. so, you know, during this time of quarantine, um, you know, you had, you had mentioned to me that you were just starting to kind of build your brand and really um, dig into uh, the WNBA market. Mm -hmm. um, so what are you doing now to, to still stay productive um, with your growing business? Uh, so I've, uh, I just got recently certified, so I've been kind of a little late in the game. So I missed out a lot of the draft classes of this year. That's getting, you know, getting drafted tomorrow night on ESPN. However, I do have a clothing apparel line. And I made a basketball clothing apparel line for women, strictly. My mother's a women uh, wholesale clothing apparel line uh, owner. So through that, I made a girls basketball line. And I asked them if they would love to be a rep, you know, rep my brand. And, you know, take some pictures, shout us out on, out on IG and on their social medias and some have agreed. And I told them after this, uh, after this whole quarantine time, hopefully I could send them out, uh, you know, a uh, care packages, you know, promo gifts, hopefully. Um, and if they, Hey man, if they play for the LA sparks, you know, maybe we could even do a photo shoot, bring my media people in there and, and do, uh, do some business for my uh, clothing apparel line. Um, as I said, I applied to be a Canadian Football League agent. So during this quarantine time, I'm also studying for their uh, exam. They have a certification exam. Uh, um, so, yes, I'm keeping myself busy. Uh, I'm also looking at what 2021 is looking like for mm -hmm. college players. Um, so I'm already looking ahead. ESPN dropped like this. So uh, they titled it too early ranking of a 2021 uh, rankings, ESPN women's basketball rankings. So <laughs> like during the, so I, you know, I'm looking at that. Um, I'm also connect, trying to, you know, going through social media on like Twitter, especially of like the WMB draft sites, you know, the, the insiders and the bloggers, et cetera. Um, being a recording artist manager and being in the music game, I, I realized how much of a power that bloggers, publications, and um, people of the media are, are, are great tools for an agent or a coach. Yeah, they have no idea because you guys are the ones seeing like the underground stories and you know, you guys are the first ones to spot out the diamond in the rough is because that's, you know, that's the motivation. You, know, you wanna be the first one to find that diamond in the rough and put it out there, let everyone know. You know, I wouldn't have never known that a Cal Berkeley girl who goes 23 right now in high school was a 29 girl two years ago. Like, I wouldn't have known that unless, you know, but you guys put it out there. So um, that's who I've been trying to connect with are like WNBA bloggers or like women's college hoop insiders and um, and especially from the blog sites, you know, like the, the independent route doesn't always have to be mainstream. You have no idea because I always believe that an individual is the Nowadays with technology, like individuals, the content create. You know, an individual could could create a lot of content if they are productive, good, and they're good at their job. Dude, they could break news and stories and the diamond in the roughs easily. So, um, I connected with like a little uh, like a media personnel. Um, he does strictly men and women's hoops, but Asian American kids that are playing division one basketball or football and et cetera. So I connected with him a couple of weeks ago, right after I got it. Cause uh, I, 
And man, I'm gonna be honest with you, our little phone conversation, he gave me a lot of dime, a lot of gems out there, a lot of nuggets out there, you know, a lot of golden nuggets out there, so to speak. So um yeah. Hey, you can stay busy. Technology, yeah. baby. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Well, awesome. Eddie, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you, Coleman, man. Hey, thank you. Hey, uh, got to give a shout out to you guys for putting my uh, former club swimmers, former high school swimmers of mine on swim swim when they commit to their co colleges and stuff. Uh, wish I had that. <laughs> I always tell my kids they're so lucky that they have swimming has – uh, publications like swim swim to make this sport into something else you know and uh hopefully i could be a part of it you know and elevate this to another level you know